October 19th, St. Peter of Alcantara, Franciscan priest and reformer. St. Peter was born in the year 1499 near the Portuguese border of Spain. While he was a youth of 16, he left his home at Alcantara and entered a convent of discalcated Franciscans near Valencia. He rose quickly to high posts in the order, starting as a guardian and ending as superior of the province of St. Gabriel. But his thirst for penance was still unappeased, and in the year 1539, being then 40 years old, he founded the Congregation of St. Joseph of the Strict Observance to conserve the letter of the rule of St. Francis. He suffered great tribulation to conserve that rule in its integrity. Eventually, St. Peter himself, the year before his death, raised it to the status of a province under obedience to the minister general of the entire seraphic order. The reform he instituted has since been extended even to the farthest Orient and the Indies. It is believed God ordained that it repair the ravages to the faith of the 16th century. The modesty of St. Peter remains proverbial in the Franciscan order. Never did he raise his eyes to look at the non-essentials of his interior life with God. His fast was constant and severe. He lived perpetually on bread and water alone, even during his illnesses. He even devised a sort of harness to keep him upright on his seat during the short hour and a half of sleep which he took every day for forty years. He acknowledged to St. Teresa of Avila that this mortification was the one which cost him the most. The cells of the friars of St. Joseph resembled graves rather than dwelling places. That of St. Peter himself was four and a half feet in length so that he could never really lie down. His sackcloth habit and a cloak were his only garments. He never covered his head or feet. In the bitter winter he would open the door and window of his cell in order that by closing them again he might be grateful for the shelter of his cell. Among those he guided to perfection, St. Teresa fully appreciated his remarkable direction. He read her soul, approved her spirit of prayer, and strengthened than her to carry out her reforms. Everywhere he could do so, he planted crosses, for the passion of our Lord was engraved in his heart. Whenever they were to be placed, even on mountains, and however heavy they may be, he went to the destined sites carrying them on his shoulders. From these heights he would then preach the mysteries of the cross, afterwards remaining in prayer there. Shepherds saw him several times in the air at the height of the highest trees of the forest. Never did he go anywhere except on foot, even in his old age. He was often seen prostrated before a large crucifix, shedding torrents of tears, and he was found in ecstasy once at the height of the traverse of a crucifix. St. Peter died at the age of sixty-three, repeating with the psalmist, I rejoice when it is said unto me, Let us go unto the house of the Lord. The date of his death was October 18, 1562, as he was kneeling in prayer. Blessed be the penances which earn me such glory. These were the words of St. Peter Alcantara when, after his death, he appeared to St. Teresa of Avila, telling her what had been reserved for him in heaven. Let us ask St. Peter Alcantara to support us in our spiritual as well as physical sufferings, in order that these penances be our cross to merit us eternal life.